Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Police say five shot in the attack in Mandeville, two seriously injured. The police have confirmed that a total of five bystanders were injured in Fridays during the attack with Berlin Limited Security Team by heavily armed gunmen at Scotiabank Ward Avenue. It was initially reported that at least three bystanders were shot and injured and had to be hospitalized. A police source on Friday told reporters that two of the injured persons were now undergoing surgery. One male received gunshot injury to his head and is currently in surgery, whilst a woman received gunshots to her abdomen and is also in surgery. One female received gunshot to her hip, one male received gunshot to his right thigh, and a man received a glaze to his right arm, the source revealed. Suspect held after Berlum robbery in Mandeville. Police have held a suspect in Friday's robbery of the Berlum Limited Security Team at the Scotia Bank in Mandeville, Manchester. According to police, the suspect was traveling in a black Toyota Witch motor car, which was intercepted about 1.30 a.m. on Saturday. The vehicle was intercepted along the Four Pants Main Road in Clarendon in the vicinity of Sunset Boulevard. One 9mm magazine, one M16, two AK-47 rounds, and a ski mask were reported recovered from the vehicle. It is understood that the vehicle, which bore mismatched registration plates, belonged to a man of a Portmore St. Catherine address. Meanwhile, police have confirmed that a total of five bystanders were injured during Friday's afternoon attack on the Berlin security team at Scotiabank Ward Avenue location in Mandeville. Reports are that sometime after 5 p.m., gunmen armed with high-powered weapons attacked the Berlin security team. Sources told reporters that at least four gunmen were involved in the attack. Amateur videos, now viral on social media, shows two men armed with high-power weapons making their escape with a bag presumably containing cash. However, a police source said the Woodhams made off with two bags containing cash. It is not yet known how much money they escaped with. Maryland President Andre McLean describes yesterday's attack on money courier guards in Manchester as an act of terror. President of Birmingham Limited, Andre McLean, has described August 25th attack on members of his team in Manchester as an act of terror. Reports are that about 5 p.m., armed robbers shot at the guard while they were at the Bank of Nova Scotia in Mandeville. Mr. McLean said no guard was hurt during the incident. Mr. McLean, however, could not state how much money was stolen. He called on persons who have information about this criminal act immediately. Contact the Jamaica Constabulary Force. As with any major crime, it is good if the public can support the police in a matter um, so we can get to the bottom of it very quickly. But this is not just an attack on Beryllium, but this is an attack on the state. And I am confident that the police is putting all of their resources on the incident. Man shot dead in front of seven-year-old son in St. Elizabeth. A man who was shot to death in front of his seven-year-old son in Elam District in St. Elizabeth on Friday. The dead man has been identified as 50-year-old Richard Griffiths, otherwise called Richie, a farmer from the district. It was reported that around 4.11 p.m., Griffiths was outside his house with his seven-year-old son when a silver car drove up with several men aboard. Police reported that one of the men exited the vehicle and opened fire at the now deceased, killing him on the spot. The man returned to the car which drove away. The police were summoned, and Griffiths taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. The body was later transported to the morgue pending a post-mortem examination. No motive has been established for the killing the police stated. Murder charges to be laid against 30-year-old woman arrested for murder of Daniel Rowe. The woman who was taken into custody in relation to the death of 8-year-old Daniel Rowe is to be charged with murder. She is a 30-year-old dental assistant of Padmore Avenue in Red Hill, St. Andrew. Deputy Commissioner of Police Fitz Bailey made the announcement on August 25th. DCP Bailey said the woman was positively pointed out during an identification parade. He noted that she is an intimate partner to Daniel's father, who is a police officer. 30 years old, dental assistant of Padmore District, Red Hill, St. Andrew, and Twickenham Park St. Catherine, who was taken into custody on Friday, August 11, 2023, was positively identified on an ID parade, which was held today, the 25th of August, 2023. The breakthrough is a reflection of the commitment, 
patient and due diligence of our investigator in this matter. And I want to commend the team that actually was involved in this investigation. It is to be noted that Ms. Sasha was an intimate partner of Daniel Rowe's father. We have not yet established a clear motive, but as the investigation proceeds, we expect that the real motive will be manifested. Ms. Sasha will be interviewed and the formal charges will ultimately be laid in the coming week. Opposition urges Health Ministry to address absence of surgeons at St. Ansby Regional Hospital. Opposition spokesman on health and wellness Dr. Maurice Guy is urging the Ministry of Health to immediately address the absence of surgeons at the St. Ansby Regional Hospital. Dr. Guy claims surgeries are being diverted to small hospitals in the region as all surgeons at the St. Ansby Hospital are either reported on leave or in a position to provide 24-hour care. He says the situation is concerning. He says the problem should be addressed before it worsens, especially for victims of traffic crashes, which frequently occurs in that era. He says regardless of the cause of the relevant authority should intervene immediately, as further delay can result in serious complications or death. We were concerned that Tenant Bay Hospital, which is a regional hospital, is not providing the surgical services that we would expect from them. We understand that the senior medical officers and leave and the replacement who is also part of the team is unable to provide all the services on a 24-hour basis. And as a consequence, what has happened is that they have had to be sending emergency cases, surgical cases, to hospitals like Type C hospitals. Regional hospitals are Type B and above hospitals, which has certain expertise or equipment that that the Type C hospitals do not have, and this cannot be allowed to continue. So we call on the Ministry of Health and the Northeast Regional Health Authority to address the problem expeditiously. If you have your surgical team and those who comprise it on leave, then you have to make provisions for others to take their place until you have a restoration of the normal services. It cannot be that you have to transport critical patients from San Jose Hospital to somewhere like a Northeast. The reverse should be happening. New JUTC buses to be ready for rollout in September when new academic year begins. The new buses for the Jamaica Urban Transit Company JUTC have arrived and will be ready for rollout in September when the new academic year begins. The 45 diesel and 5 electric units are now being removed from the cargo ship that transported them at the Kingston Wharves. Transport Minister Darrell Voss noted that the removal process is tedious and dangerous due to the use of cranes to take them down one bus at a time. The new vehicles will be checked, licensed and put on the roads by next weekend. Mr. Voss said he expects to have over 300 buses ready for September, with special focus placed on servicing some Spanish Town roads. As you know, the buses are about two months delayed from the estimated time of arrival original, which was May to June. And that was because of the fact that the buses were shipped with other cargo and got delayed in other ports. The truth is that going forward, any buses that are ordered will have to be shipped in a certain way, which is roll on, roll off, meaning you drive them on and drive them off. Because right now we have to be using a crane to take off each of the 50 buses time-consuming and also very dangerous in terms of, obviously, any incident that would cause you to lose a bus by virtue of uh, damage. That is where we are at. Uh, we are going to take the buses off of the wall this weekend and pre-delivery service them, license them, and get them ready to integrate into the existing fleet so that we can have a smooth September back to school. We are moving to have the buses ready to hit the road by the end of next week. So we still have a lot more to do. We have another 20 new buses coming, six of them in November to December and 14 of them in January to February. And I'm trying to see whether or not, based on discussions with the Ministry of Finance, we can procure another 100 new buses uh, within the next 12 months. And that will obviously ease a lot of the, the misery index in terms of the commuters. We will put the buses into the back-to-school fleet we are moving from 140 to 160 buses rolling out daily. We're going to hope to get to 315 for the back-to-school September morning, of which these 50 will be included. We are doing major repairs to the existing buses, 
uh, which average about 12 to 14 years old. So obviously those buses are not in the best of condition, but until we can replace the fleet, we have to work with what we have. So I'm working towards 315 and specific emphasis on the Spanish town and Portmore routes, which have been plagued by major delays because of the lack of buses. So we're going to be moving to make sure that we have sufficient buses on those routes to make sure that the public commuters can get at ease of the delays in the buses. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification.